She sits alone by a lamppost Trying to find a thought that's escaped her mind Singer, songwriter, and uh, the voice star too as well, Mr. James Dupre. Good morning, James. How are you? Good morning. Uh, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, Grand, on this morning. Now, first off, for the few people who may not be familiar with you, who is James Dupre? Um, I am. I'm just a, a dude from Louisiana uh, trying to sing songs and uh, make great music. <laughs> Well, that is a great analogy, and uh, you hit the nail on the head. Fantastic singer, too, as well. Now, James, my first encounter with you in my memory banks, is, uh, despite the fact how fuzzy they are, was when you performed on Ellen. Can you take us back to that performance, and how did you get on the show? Um, yeah, that, that was uh, back in 2010, and you know, leading up to that point, I had just been um, working as a paramedic and and, and making YouTube videos uh, of country covers and other songs that I really like to uh, sing. And, and then uh, one day I just got an email uh, from one of the producers of the show. And basically it said that they, you know, Ellen had seen my, some of my videos and she wanted me on her show. And, and I was out in LA the the next week (laughs) on the show. It was, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was in your your rendition of uh, Matchbox 20's uh, 3 a.m. There, uh, uh, why pick that one, and why is it a favorite of yours? Well, um, growing up, you know, mostly in the '90s is really whenever you know music really started to, uh, you know, have an effect on me and really interest me. And I love a lot of different kinds of music, including a lot of the alternative rock that came out of the '90s. Um, and that was just one of the covers that Ellen had seen and that she really liked. Uh, there were a couple of options that she wanted me to do, uh, one of which was that song, and then the other was a song called New Orleans Ladies. And uh, so we did both of them, and then they aired the uh, Matchbox 20 song. Your experience with Ellen, is she, ever, is she everything she seems to be on TV, too? Absolutely. She is just a, such a funny and genuine uh, human being and you know i'm really glad that i got a chance to meet her well let's fast forward a few years uh, let's talk about your experience on the voice i'm sure many people were moved by your rendition of hootie and the blowfish is uh let her cry and it gives me goosebumps every time i hear it why well, pick that one um you know it's just it's another one of those songs that uh i i've always loved to sing and in fact it's it's actually one of my favorite songs to perform live i do it almost every show um just because i you know i love the 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 melody and the way it uh the way my voice you know there's there's so much range and dynamics in that song and um you know i just really feel it when i sing it and so i was really happy whenever they allowed me to to sing that song now, when we saw that audition, Pharrell, Adam, and Gwen, they immediately turned their chairs around, literally within seconds of you performing. Did Blake ever give you a reason why he waited so long to turn his chair finally around? <laughs> um, no, but I guess maybe he he was trying to uh, not seem so eager. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Well, you know, and another thing that uh, everyone was wondering about to everybody, even uh, your family and support that came, you, they were saying that you were going to pick Blake. Why Adam? Yeah, you know, I, I, I told myself I was going to pick Blake leading up to that. And um, I also, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, I, I wanted to live in the moment on that stage and just listen to what the coaches had to say and make my decision based on that, you know, um, and I really liked what, every, what all the coaches had to say. But Adam just really, you know, he really convinced me. He persuaded me. He seemed very passionate. And, and um, you know, the, the thing that he said about hearing some James Taylor influence was, you know, right on the nose. And, um, you know, I just, I just felt like, well, maybe it, it would be a little predictable, cliche maybe, if, if I went with Blake. So, I wanted to be a little outside the box. 
Well, let's talk also about your uh, full-on experience with the Season 9, The Voice. A lot of people don't uh, necessarily think that everything happens on screen and on TV all the time. Talk about your day. Uh, how early did it start and how late did it end uh, during taping days? During taping days, um, we usually had like a, let's see, it was about a 5 a.m. lobby time, and then they would transport us to the uh, to the studios at Universal Studios, and um, it's, we would basically just kind of, it was kind of like a hurry up and wait situation, you know, we would spend about three hours in wardrobe and hair and makeup, and then um, they would transport us to the actual stage, and then it was kind of, it was pretty quick once we got there, you know, um, we, we were there like, they would probably four or five of us at a time, and just do our taping, and then off we go, back to the hotel. <laughs> well, James, you know, I've uh, seen a couple of interviews uh, from you, and as you mentioned, you started from very humble beginnings, and then you were able to cut an album in uh, 2010. Now, let's talk about that album, too, as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's it's my debut album, and um, I was lucky enough, actually, to have it coincide with the timing uh, of me being on Ellen, so that actually really helped um, you know, get the get my name out there and also uh, get the album out there as well. Um, it's kind of you know there there are a couple of originals on there and there are a couple of covers and a lot of other uh, songs that friends of mine and other songwriters in Nashville had written. And uh, there's one actually from uh, John Fogarty, uh, "Who'll Stop the Rain," that I really love. And it's I'm just really proud of it. It was produced by uh, Kyle Lemming and Jerry Douglas. Um, I think it sounds great. You know, I'm, I, I still sometimes listen to it, you know, five years later. Now, obviously, your second album's coming up, and uh, with your appearance on The Voice, I'm sure the uh, work and the release will definitely be accelerated. Can you give us any insight on uh, your latest album and when we're going to be seeing it and hearing it? Yeah, this is going to be, I'm really excited about it. Um, this is going to be a lot, mostly songs that, I, that I've written, and um Actually, we're going into the studio next week in Nashville and finishing it up. We have four four left to do. And then um, hopefully, we don't have an exact date yet, but hopefully in January or February, we'll be able to release a single or release the entire album on, on uh, iTunes and Spotify and, and all that stuff. Now, James, uh, most people may not know this about you, but you're a true renaissance man. Besides being a singer-songwriter, you've also dabbled into the movie scene, too, as well, with Randy Travis. You want to talk? tell us a little bit about that, too? Yeah, you know, that was so interesting how that came about, because I, I don't have any, I didn't have any acting experience whatsoever, but I was always kind of curious, you know, hey, I wonder if I'd be good at acting or not, you know. And uh, so I got this random email from uh, the producer, the writer and producer of the, of the movie, it's called The Price. And um, she asked if I wanted to have a small part in a movie playing as Randy Travis's son. And I was, of course I was interested, you know, I mean, Randy Travis has always been a huge influence on me and uh, just, you know, one of the greatest country voices ever, in my opinion. And um, so, but, you know, we went down to Dallas and started shooting this little short film and, Basically, what the way it kind of played out is uh, Randy ended up having some health issues just months after we started shooting. And uh, so they kind of had to put the project on hold, and uh, re they rewrote the scripts. And it turned out that I had the lead part after that. So <laughs> it, it was pretty pretty wild. And, uh, you know, I, I, I find it a little weird to see myself on the big screen, but um, – you know, I think it. I think it turned out well, and people seem to enjoy it. I just picked up on a funny comment that you said there. You found it weird to see yourself on the big screen. Do you find it equally as weird as to see yourself on TV? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, the you know, <laughs> when the when the blind audition aired, um, you know, I was just sitting. I, I mean, I knew what what would happen, obviously, but I was still sitting at the edge of my seat, like. So I, I didn't sleep at all that night. You know, it was it was uh, you know pretty weird, but just overwhelming. You know, and and all the love and support that everybody has given me. Um, you know, it's it, it's just been a 
a whirlwind, and a, and, a, and I'm very, very grateful, you know, to have experienced that. Now we're talking to James Dupre. He will be coming to the island, and we're going to be talking uh, the tour very shortly, too. You talked about how it's been such a whirlwind since you participated in The Voice. Can you take us, uh, what was it like to actually, unfortunately, things didn't quite turn out for you, but those battles, uh, they were incredible. Your performances were absolutely amazing. Uh, tell us, what has it been like since you've uh, been eliminated from The Voice? And give us a little bit of an insight into uh, James Dupre's life right now. Well, I actually came home to Louisiana. Uh, I drove in on Monday during the day, and uh, I just I was able to watch that last episode with my family and friends. And uh, I've just been enjoying the week so far, and uh, and you know back at home, and not really uh, doing much of anything except spending time with the family and the kids, and you know just uh, enjoying enjoying some relaxation time before I hit the road again. Now, James, obviously, you just mentioned that you uh, you uh, came back home and you saw the episode with your family and your friends. What's been the reaction like been in your hometown? Overwhelming support. You know, I, I, I'm still going through uh, texts and, and Facebook messages and things um, just from people just, you know, telling me, you know, never to give up. And, of course, you know, not that that was ever an option for me, but uh, – you know, and, and driving around and seeing uh, signs on, on businesses, you know, saying Team James and, you know, just all kind. I come from a very uh, wonderful community here in, in Louisiana. Now, James, also, uh, we want to talk about your tour of uh, parts of uh, Newfoundland and uh, Labrador. First off, I want to ask you, will this be your first time you've ever visited the province? Oh, no. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an honorary Newfie. <laughs> I uh I've been there I think this will be my fifth time. Yes, it's it's going to be a great time. So let's talk about your tour. Uh you're going to be joining uh you're going to be joining a few great local musicians here. Uh you're going to be uh joined with uh Craig Young on guitar, and you'll be coming to the East Link Event Center here in Clarenville on December 18th. For uh, people that will be attending your show or people who may have not attended your show prior to, what kind of a show are we going to be seeing that night, James? It's, it's going to be, you know, really laid back, uh, you know, just some acoustic covers and, and, and some originals and, and, you know, just kind of all over the, the map. You know, I do a lot of country, but I also do some some old rock and roll and you know, just whatever I I love to perform, and I, I'm also going to play some songs from my first album and some some of the new ones from my upcoming album. Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Now, James, is there anything else that you'd like to add this morning, my friend? Well, I just know that I am. Uh, I always look forward to to heading out there, and and uh, you know, I've been there once before in December, and I remember it being pretty cold and and you know so I, i'm gonna bring a heavier jacket than i did last time <laughs> that's always good advice even in the middle of the summer james <laughs> yes indeed now james uh people are all over the social media nowadays and i'm sure you are too if people want to follow along with uh, james dupre and uh, get the latest uh where can we go i tweet a lot so twitter is always always a good uh you know, good uh, platform to to follow me on. Also, Instagram and Facebook, and I, I just started a mailing list on my uh, website, jamesdupre dot com. So, if you uh, want direct e uh, emails, which I I don't bombard people with emails, uh, probably just a, a, a few a year. But uh, yeah, if you if you know they want to sign up for the email uh, the mailing list, and you know, take it from there. James Dupre, singer, songwriter, actor, renaissance man, and he just finished up on season nine of The Voice. He's going to be playing some select tour dates here on the island. Don't miss out on this very special treat. He's going to be performing at the East Link Event Center with uh, Craig and James Young on guitar. That's December 18th. And a show in the St. John's region at the Johnson Geo Center on December 17th with guest John Curran and James, uh, Craig Young on guitar too as well get your tickets dc live nl.com or eastlink event center.com james dupre thanks so much for your time this morning i really do appreciate it sir oh thank you so much for having me looking forward to visiting Somebody.
somebody told me 